All right, hey everyone. Uh, just like Kim said, my name is Troy. Uh, so what do I do? I work at Grape City uh, on improving some of our onboarding processes with customers through our documentation, samples, and our API. So uh, my role has actually changed a lot recently, so I don't want to talk too much about it because I can't explain it very succinctly. <laughs> um, but today I'm going to be talking about service workers. And I call this talk the beauty of service workers because I think that there is something really, really special about them. And I hope that through the, after this talk that you do too. Um, if you don't see it, then I didn't do my job. <laughs> so ask questions. Uh, and after the talk, feel free to, to chat. Um, ask me anything. I'm pretty, I'm like an open book, so. All right, so also, oh, before I get going, I want to give thanks to Mike Hardington for not spoiling this. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, Mike. I don't know if he's in here, but. All right. So what is a service worker? Um, this is a pretty generic question because outside of a software context, it can be misunderstood. Like once I asked a person, what do they think a service worker is? And this was their answer. <laughs> yeah, we don't have any social workers here, do we? Okay, so we can go ahead and cross that one off the list. Um, there, there are also some other explanations that I got uh, when I asked about what is a service worker and I uh, just want to list them out here. You may have actually come across these as well, but we'll, we'll work through them and try to come to a common definition. So a service worker is a type of worker, right? Okay, that doesn't really help us. <laughs> so what is a worker? Um, a worker is a script that runs in the browser's background. Okay, that's, that's a little bit more interesting. So what else have we heard about this? Uh, it's a network proxy, it helps um, intercept network requests, and uh, I don't want to say too much. Uh, and it's an essential part of a progressive web app, as Mike pointed out in his presentation as well. Um, so yeah, all of those things are related. You know, they're obviously not a social service worker, <laughs> um, but they they kind of are can be misleading. So the technical definition for a service worker is an event-driven worker registered under an origin and a path. So we have this worker, right, which is a script that runs in the browser's background and it's driven by an event. But JavaScript is an event-driven language, so does that really help <laughs> in our definition? Um, so let's talk about it a little bit more. So a worker is a script that runs in the browser's background, right? But you may want to compare this to like an operating system because we're kind of getting into this idea of multi-threading and concurrency. Um, so a worker's context actually has its own stack, heap, and queue. Maybe not entirely, but this is the way we want to think about it, right? So with that, this worker context is basically uh, a duplication of the main application's context. So your application actually has these uh, components as well. So this would be duplicated in a way and managed um, through the event loop. Uh, so what problems do service workers address? Um, they are supported in most modern browsers now, except for IE, but <laughs> uh, the problems that they address are these three here. The HTML5 app cache, which is the previous iteration of how to interact with the browser's cache. It was not that flexible um, and it caused unexpected behaviors, so it was hard to test and maintain. So, uh, service workers were, were born. <laughs> uh, so then we have background processing. So what does that mean? It's kind of like when we said we had a script running in the background. So when you have like uh, a lot of calculations that are running in the browser and it's really intensive, then it can make your application unresponsive. So when users click on the screen or mouse events on hovers, things, all those things can be like interrupted 
when you have like a very, very intensive uh, function that's running. So this can really like slow down the performance of your application. The other portion of this that's actually important is recovering errors. Um, next. <laughs> so how can a service worker be used? Well, there's a few ways, right? We, so we talked about managing network requests. It can also be used to manage the browser storage. Um, it's also important in um, minimizing the application's dependency on the network. And um, there's actually a few other things, but one I'm gonna mention but not talk about too much is uh, you can actually send notifications to desktop uh, application or to um, desktop applications. So I don't wanna talk too much about it because I'm not like actually <laughs> that well versed in that subject, but uh, these are just some of the things that, that you can do with a, uh, with a service worker. So some other browser APIs. So since a, server work, a service worker has its own context, it's actually, it actually has only a, a limited set of um, APIs that it can work with in the browser. And most of those, or actually all of those APIs are asynchronous. So you can't use something like uh, XML HTTP requests in a service worker because it's a synchronous based API. Uh, you also can't use local storage. Um, so we have to think about, or at least the community had to think about how can we make, uh, how can we make these service workers, service workers really powerful. So they had to build some other APIs that could work with it. Uh, one of the most common ones is fetch. And fetch is kind of like an asynchronous version of XML HTTP requests. Um, so your service worker can actually intercept a fetch event and handle um, a request. Uh, there's also a cache API, which lets you interact with the browser's native cache. Um, there's push. Uh, there's also notifications, which I don't have listed. Um, Notifications actually enable the sending of messages to the device's native OS. So this kind of relates to the previous slide where I said you can send um, notifications to uh, desktops. Um, it's actually you're interacting with the, the native device. So uh, the background synchronization is an API that ensures request uh, responses go through. So when your application is offline or it has a weak uh, network connection, uh, this API is a way of managing those requests to make sure they are fulfilled. Uh, there's also channel messaging, which is really cool because you can use that to actually allow communication in between uh, workers uh, registered under the same origin and path. So let's say you have a web worker and a service worker and you need them to communicate, then you would use this channel messaging API. And then there is also index DB, which is another, um, it's, it's like a smaller database in your browser that's asynchronous and is a lot easier to manage than some of the others. So let's just look at like typical uh, request flow. So we have a browser here and we wanna go to myapp.com. If you make a request to the server and you get back you know, all these files. You get your HTML, CSS, your JavaScript, any images or assets, and they're returned to the browser, right? But when you go to visit another page, this same process happens again, right? In a traditional, simple web app. Um, so the service worker actually kind of interrupts this traditional workflow. So let's look at uh, the life cycle and how, how this actually works. So uh, with, with these life cycle hooks or events, um, you actually have a lot more control over uh, how, how your application behaves when you send out a request or how it behaves when you get a response from the network. You also have control over the cache because you can, you can actually compare the data that comes back from, um, from the network with the data that's in your cache and overwrite that before sending it back to the main application thread. 
So I don't want to get too deep with it, but like there's a lot of different things you can do. And um, we'll walk through a few examples so you can see like how some of these flows work. So there's the life cycle of a service worker has three main events. And the first one is a register event. So uh, if we go back to the previous slide, right? Let's say that this application actually returns uh, a service worker as a, as a JavaScript file. This would be considered the download. And it's not necessarily a lifecycle event, but it is something that has to happen in order for um, the service worker to, to actually be registered. So, yep, I'm sure you've seen this before. Uh, you check to see if the service worker is available and register it uh, in the browser. So when the service worker is registered, this code actually is not in the service worker file. This code is in the main application file, or JavaScript file. So I'm gonna show some other code snippets and these are actually going to be in the service worker file. So the next step after your register is the install. So after you register your application or your service worker in the browser, then the next step that is triggered is the install event. And once this happens, then you can actually use the service worker to, to do all of the crazy uh, management that I've, I've kind of uh, spit out. <laughs> uh, so here, basically we add an event listener for the install event and um, you see that there's this e dot wait until. So e is obviously assumed to be an event, but um, there's this wait until method. Like what does that mean? So wait until actually uh, postpones the uh, termination of this event in, your, uh, in the browser. So when this install event happens and you say e.wait until, this code in this, uh, in this section is executed immediately and there's no interruption from any other tasks that are in the queue from your, from your application. So you can guarantee that this will basically be like a synchronous or semi-synchronous operation. Um, so E is actually a kind of a special, a special case here. So it's called an extendable, extendable event, and it's an interface that extends the lifetime of the install and activate events. So the third lifecycle hook of a service worker is activate. So we wanna make sure that uh, after the service worker is installed, the activation step really gives you um, the power to do whatever you need to do, right? Um, when it says activated, that means that your browser, or this service worker has control over everything, oh, I'm sorry, or intercepting those fetch, um, fetch requests and any other uh, events that we may have. So what happens here is the extendable event waits and then it gets the keys to cache uh, from a list. So, and then it returns a promise. But, you know, this is all kind of gibberish code, right? Really what it's doing is just saying like, hey, let me compare these keys to the ones that are actually in the cache and if they're old, replace them. If not, then just leave them. So fetch is a, a, another event that you can use as well as an as a API. Um, but in a service worker, if you add an event listener for the fetch uh, event, what you're actually doing is you're, you're basically saying, if there's a fetch request from my main application, then I want to intercept it here as long as my service worker is activated. So if the service worker is activated, then the code that I have to handle this event will be executed. So here's an example of, of an intercepting uh, network, network request. So what actually happens is, uh, let's say our application makes this request. Um, we have this data URL that we basically want to uh, interface the request from. So let's say if this, if this request came from some other URL, then maybe that isn't important to us, but we're focused on what we have here. So 
we're going to basically compare this data URL to the one that was requested from our main application and make sure that if it is that one, then we're going to override what is actually happening to that, uh, to that uh, request. But if it isn't, then just go ahead and send the request as if, as if it even, didn't even pass through the service worker. Um, so fetch is more like a, a functional event. It's not a, a lifecycle hook um, compared to register, install, and activate. But it's very common to, to use. Uh, and this is basically where you get this network proxy idea of how a service worker is, is like, a, uh, like a proxy for your, for your web application. So there's also some other things that, to consider about the service worker other than just those lifecycle hooks that I talked about. And it's how you update the service worker and how you terminate it. And you actually can't control the termination of your service worker through the application itself. Um, it actually would have to be deleted from the browser. But uh, I'll show you how to do that. Um, so when you actually visit an application that has a service worker, it's downloaded, it's registered, and it's activated, you do your thing on that website, and then you leave. You close the tab, you close the browser. But the service worker is actually still there. It still exists in the browser. So you have to be aware of that because the next time you visit your application, you're not gonna get a new service worker. You're actually gonna have the same one. The only way that that would actually change is if um, the byte order of the service worker on the server is different from the one in the browser. So then it would download that new service worker and actually override, um, it would just uh, replace the, con or the, the previous one. Um, okay, so yeah, I said that you revisit, service worker is just reactivated, uh, it's not deleted, uh, caches are also still remaining, so your content's still there, unless the service worker that was reactivated overwrote that content based on the caching strategy that you chose, and we'll talk a little bit more about those as well. Yes, this is what I just said. So. Adding a service worker to your apps, how do we do that? Like, where does it go? Let's look. All right. So I have a very, 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 very basic <laughs> web app right here for you guys to look at. And that's because I just want you to understand kind of like fundamentally what's going on. So I mentioned previously that in order to, to use a service worker, your app has to register it, but then that registration comes in your main application's JavaScript file. So we have app.js here, right? So we check to see if service worker is supported in this browser, and then we register it. But our service worker file is actually at the root of our application. So when you build an application that's a little bit more complex, like an Angular or React, you kind of have to really consider how this is going to work. That's a talk for another, uh, another day. Um, but this is how it was, how the spec was designed. You put the service worker at the root of the folder, of the um, application folder and it's registered from there. So let's look at that service worker. Inside of the service worker, there are a few different items. There's a name for the cache, because we want to cache the items that we have in, our, um, in the browser's cache when it's loaded. So we have to give it a name. Um, the cache that we're using is basically like a key value pair, so we just if the name of the cache changes, then it will be uh, the existing content will have the same name and it'll be there. But if you change this name and you reload the application, then you'll have a new entry with a new name. So you may have duplicates. So this stuff gets really tricky really fast. Um, and then we have a list of files that we want to cache, which are located in this images folder. So 
we listed install, we talked about install, we talked about activate, and we talked about fetch. Uh, notice that it's calling, um, or it's adding event listeners to itself. And it says self is a window as I hover over this, but there's actually no window concept to, to, the, uh, to the service worker. It doesn't have any DOM access. All right, so let me go back. All right, so we know that we add a service worker to the root of our application. Now let's talk about actually using that service worker. So there's these things called caching strategies. There's all these different ways that you can manage the data that's in the browser. And we're just gonna talk about a few of them because it's pretty much up to you how you implement this. Um, so I'm gonna talk about one that's may not be the best, but you know it all depends on your use case. So let's say we wanna um, interact with the network first. So we can always try to get data that actually is, uh, or the latest, right? So we make a request, and this orange thing is our service worker. <laughs> so it intercepts that fetch request, and then it goes out to the, ser or to, the, uh, to the web server, and it tries to extract that content. So when the web server is ready, it sends it right back. And then our service worker says, all right, so let me respond, or how do I wanna handle this response, right? Um, what you really want to do in the network first is you want to update um, your cache and your, uh, your application, right? That's kind of straightforward. But what happens if we don't have an internet connection? So let's do the same thing. Uh, we make a request through our service worker. It goes to the web server, but we don't get a response because the <laughs> request never made it to the server. So what we do is we go to the cache instead and we look for the content there and we return it to our web app. So we still have content to, to load, um, but it may not be the freshest, so. All right, so here's another strategy. It's called cache then network. This is probably one of the most common ones uh, that is used. So let's walk through this. We, we uh, make a request, our service worker goes out to the network but it also looks at the cache as well. Actually, those should be flipped. <laughs> Sorry to confuse you all. I got my animations mixed up. Um, all right, so let's go back. So the first step is actually gonna be hit the cache and then it's gonna hit the network. But obviously the cache is gonna return faster just because it's right there in the browser and we'll update our website with that content. But once the request actually comes back from the network, we want to we want to use that too because it's probably um, updated. Probably has something new that that we want to share that we want to show to our users. So we update, we get that response back, and we update the cache again, and then we update uh, update the uh, main application. So this may be uh, probably the most common one to use because you're always trying to get the freshest data and you're always updating the user with uh, some content. So let's do that again, but with no network connection. So we send out a request, our service worker goes to the cache, and it comes back, updates our, uh, updates our app. But obviously this doesn't work, so nothing actually happens. The end user's vision of what is happening in the background doesn't see any difference. But in the previous example, it would update twice. So um, testing all of these scenarios can be quite tricky <laughs> as well. Uh, so just uh, try to keep it simple <laughs> at first and then build as you go. Also, just a couple of things to keep in mind as I wrap up here. Um, the, the service worker does not have access to the DOM. Um, it also must be used over an HTTPS uh, connection to mitigate uh, security uh, attacks and things. So uh, stick with that <laughs> because you have to. And it also only works with asynchronous APIs um, and it's non-blocking to the main application thread. So <clears throat> these are actually some benefits that you have when you're using them, but 
just some uh, things to keep in the back of your mind when you're working with them. Um, so some tips and tricks just for when you are debugging or testing your service workers is use Chrome DevTools and always test in Chrome first because it's the most progressive when it comes to browser API support. Um, yeah, just start there, please. <laughs> It'll save you headaches in the future. Um, do not disable your, your networks or your machine's network. And if you are deciding to test them, if you have unit tests or integration tests, then try to test in isolation or isolated like uh, lo units of logic and uh, also mock the APIs for your network requests. All right, so to wrap it up, the beauty of service workers is, that was nice. <laughs> it's you're in complete control. You can control how your data is managed, you can control the network requests, and you can control how um, your end users uh, interact with your application. You can't control the network, but whatever. I don't think you're ever gonna be able to do that. So thank you all for um, attending the talk and hope you all enjoy the rest of the, of the conference. Service workers. I mean, yeah. I love service workers. Me too, yeah. one of my favorite things. You know what the best thing that happened to service workers in 2018 was? No. Uh, Safari actually adopted them in mobile Safari and desktop Safari. Right. That was yeah. huge. Yes. Yes, I mean, is. we had service workers for a long, long time, but we're very limited in the fact that Safari wasn't supporting it, so that's, that's huge, so. Yes, yes, it is huge. I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, I'd like to see how it, how it progresses in the, in the near future, because. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, it's, it's an amazing tool to have in our, like, just in our systems and our applications and being able to use it. Like, you covered that, it's like, it is fairly, it's pretty like simple, but then there's a lot of caveats there that make yeah. it a little bit difficult. I love that you kind of put that in there. It's like, it's, it's not easy, yeah. but it's very powerful. Yeah. I got, I got one for both of you. What's, what's the worst thing that has happened to service workers in 2018? <laughs> I, I, I don't even know where you're going with this. <laughs> push notifications. I hate push notifications. Uh, Every yeah. website you go to, it's like, you want to receive notifications from this website? I'm like, no. It's like the new check out my mixtape. I'm like, no, man. I don't. I don't want yeah. it. I don't want your notifications. Just, like, let me use the internet the way I want to. We need like a like an extension that just automatically declines that. There you go. Someone should, someone should write someone that. Should write someone that. Write that yeah. right yeah. now. Right just now like, would be super cool. No, I don't want any notifications. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What's your, what's your favorite thing like that you? What first turned you on to service workers? Well, actually, I started looking to progressive web apps. Yeah. And, that and was obviously, when, it was necessity. Yeah, was 90% of the work that I was doing was involved using a service worker. And I was like, well, this is really what makes a service worker a service worker. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> I mean, totally I'm sorry, a progressive web app. But. As, a, as a product manager, how important do you think it is to have engineering knowledge? I think it's very important. Um, I also think it's very important to have the, the, the drive to want to, to dive into the, the problems that your team is solving. And uh, it's, it's also like a weird balance. Like I said, I'm kind of new in the role, so I'm trying to figure it out myself because I don't want to overindulge. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, man, or trying to understand my responsibility and not when to cross the line is, uh, is, has been the biggest problem I've had so far. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I would, I would always dive in every single time. I mean, it's hard not to, right? Like, it's just like, you're, it's good to know that, like, have that understanding, be able to have that conversation, but also trust that the engineer, like they're gonna, they're gonna run with it. You can suggest something right. and understand high level and, and let them run with it, which I actually like that you have that technical ability as a product manager. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I'm, I'm excited for it. Like I said, I'm kind of new, so I'm learning as I go. <laughs> in, your, in my mind, you are a senior product manager. Well, <laughs> thanks for the compliment. Update that title. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.